Hello, beautiful creative people. Welcome to howtoartjournal.com. I'm your creative tour guide and fellow art journal lover, Kyla Givehand. Today, I chat with Grace Howes about her creative journey and the power of the art journal. Grace believes that creating from your heart serves your soul, that objects used for function and practical purposes should also be beautiful and a pleasure to use. That's why she makes handmade journals. Grace grew up in the Bahamas, a place of tranquil waters, white sandy beaches, and lots and lots of color. She's an art maker, journal lover, word gatherer, paper hoarder, and life photographer. She teaches online courses that will inspire you to create, journal, and explore your authentic soul. You can find Grace on YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, and on her blog at redbarn-studios.com. Thanks so much for joining us. Welcome, Grace. Thank you so much for joining me. It seems like forever we've been trying to make this happen, and so I'm really, really excited to have you here to talk with you about art journaling and to really just share all the amazing work that you're doing with our um, followers and readers and people who pay attention to what we're doing here at How to Art Journal. So thank you. Thank you for inviting me. This is yeah. going to be fun. Yes, I'm excited. So um, just for folks who are listening, um, Grace and I, our paths have crossed in many, many ways. And this interview is long overdue. And I told her when, when I sent her the me message saying I want to interview, I was like, it'll just be a conversation. So prepare yourselves for just a conversation between oh, two okay. people who um, cross paths often in a lot of different spaces. So um, I'll just jump right in, Grace, and have you tell us what brought you to art journaling. What, what did, how did you get into art journaling, um, and how, how has that journey, you know, progressed for you? I got into art journal journaling by, um, through the means of mixed media. Mm -hmm. And the only reason I got into mixed media was because as an art quilter, I was kind of burnt out. So I was looking for a, nif a different outlet to mm -hmm. Because, you know, it, it, once you're, you're a creative, it just has to come out of you. Yeah. So I started mixed media. I started painting. And, I, and the, I love mixed media, mainly because I can use the same supplies that I was using for art quilting. I really did not have to go and purchase anything. Mm. So mixed media led me to art journaling because I am a journaler. I'm first and foremost a journal. I love to write. I love words. Nice. And it dawned on me after seeing a few um, pieces of, of art out there from people, other people, mm -hmm. that I can combine my journaling with the art because that really is art journaling. It yeah. really is. That's the yeah. basics of it. So yeah. that's how I started with art journaling. Okay. Absolutely love it right now. Yeah. So, you know, for people who are like me maybe, and I, I know what quilting is, but I don't know if I know what art quilting is. Can you talk a little bit about that and maybe explain the difference between just a regular quilt and an art quilt? Okay, so you know an, a, a traditional quilting, you right. have a log cabin and you have blocks and squares and mm -hmm. whatever. Mm -hmm. that, that is pieced together um, into a block and okay. blocks are pieced together into a quilt. Mm -hmm. Art quilting, however, is more creative. It is you're taking the same ideas that you would put on a canvas mm -hmm. and you would, you would actually make it out of fabric. And one of the ones that, one of th this one behind me here, mm -hmm. that's an art quilt that actually won an award in a black and white show, which is kind of cool. Wow. Um, so that is my main method of art quilting. There's, a, there's quite a few different methods. Mm -hmm. My main method of art quilting was to fuse. So I would adhere a fusible to the back of the fabric and create all those shapes you see behind me. All of those are individually placed wow. on the fabric, on the background, and then um, steamed with an iron, or not steamed with an iron, just ironed. Right. So art quilting is more about um, taking the ideas that you have in your head mm -hmm. and putting them out in fabric oh, as okay. opposed to cutting up separate pieces, piecing them together and creating a block. And there are and then, thousands of blocks out there Yeah, and putting them into a quilt. Okay. So there's, okay. The, there's the difference. Okay. So that actually helps me because... Um, I, one of the people I really admire mostly because of the children's books is Faith Ringel and her, her quilts, she does the, she has these quilts that actually have stories written around the edge of them. Uh, and I saw her work in a, a firsthand in a, 
uh, art exhibit in New York one time and it was I think I must have stood looking at one for like 20 minutes just trying to figure out how it was created and how it was done but I'm listening to you now I'm like okay that totally makes sense it was probably an art quilt it wasn't a traditional quilt so probably yeah yeah, traditional yeah. quilting go, as you know goes way way back and yeah. art quilting it's a newer expression it's 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 been around for a little while but it's a newer expression okay. and this, it was an, it was kind of like an automatic transition for me to go yeah. into art quilting, which the art quilting itself, because I could make stuff like that back there, right. it translated well into mixed media. Yes. So I was, I was just trading mediums, basic fabric for paper. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I like that trading mediums. So um, in terms, it, you said that the move was easy because you had all the supplies, the mixed media stuff, and you were able to just take that and translate it onto paper now. So uh, you, you, you talked about journaling. So would you share a little bit, you know, one of the things I really want people to be able to see um, is the exquisite book binding work that you do. Um, and I know that that ties very closely into journaling, blank books, journaling, they all kind of go together. So it seems like your um, what's cir circling around you is all very, you know, connected and relevant. So mm -hmm. would you show us some of your journals and maybe talk about your personal journaling um, process and how you, what you do with that? Um, my journal process, if you see the basket of journals, I, I actually did a recon plate, basically, of all the journals I've used only this year. Wow. There's about 10 or 12 of them. Wow. And that's not counting the ones that, that I have yet to get through because the year is not over. <laughs> right. So, um, once I figured out how to make books, mm -hmm. and that was a process, that, that happened in between the the leaving of the art quilting and the beginning of mixed media, I just needed to kind of get my hands into it. So I just right. kind of started bookbinding. Mm -hmm. And um, I started by making them for friends. So I wasn't thinking about selling books, journal. Right. right. I was just, it was, a, I needed, I had creativity energy that I needed to get out. Yes. So I started bookbinding and yeah. it kind of stuck. So the books that I make now are, for instance, this one is called, mm -hmm. uh, daily junk journal. Mm -hmm. And I love that because it's small enough to fit in your bag and it's mm -hmm. filled with all sorts of ephemera. Oh, I love um, it. So that's small enough. I love the size of this. Yes. And I this daily junk because anything goes. Anything. Yeah. I write a lot and this kind of fits definitely. Yeah. And I started getting into making different types of journals mm -hmm. and experimenting. And one of the ones is this um, reporter journal. I call it the reporter journal because you can read it. You can use it this way or you can use it this way. Oh, nice. So mm -hmm. Either way. Mm -hmm. And then I started experimenting as you can see. With oh, the, beautiful. This is actually leather. Nice. Nice. And then the other type I do is because I'm an art journaler, mm -hmm. I can make sketchbooks which makes sense to me. Um, the sketchbooks are, are a little bit larger, so they're still portable. I right. like the portability of it. Mm -hmm. But the, this is a um, French link with a Coptic stitch included. Yeah. I, I, I just love the stitching. And I think part of the stitching comes from the fact that I was a sewer and a quilter. Yeah. So, you know, that's still, I can still do that process. Yeah. And these papers are filled with... Um, Heavier papers. I mean, they're mm -hmm. all most of my journals are all blank inside. Right. And the heavier papers that can take the weight of water. Little mm -hmm. not watercolor paper, which right. is a little heavier, um, gets it a, a little bit weightier with the water wetness. Yeah. But, um, mixed media works well in these in these books. So yeah. those are the types of journals I make. Okay. So can you show the one that the last one with the pink elephants on it again? Just the spine of that. Um, because I really want people to see, you know, Coptic work, stitch, hand stitched work is, thank you, is really like, I mean, Grace's work is just exquisite. Like I said, it's so um, meticulous, I think is the other word I would use yeah, as well. It's just. <laughs> So I love that you said it started with friends, like give it, you just did it to, you know, get out some creative energy and you want to give gifts to friends. I think so many of us start um, 
the things that we become passionate about start as just like oh, something I'm going to try. It's a hobby. I'm just going to see if I like it. Um, and I think, you know, those listening and watching are probably nodding and saying, yep, I've done that. Started doing jewelry. Then I did this and then I moved on to that. Right. I think when you are, when you have a creative urge, you have to find a way until you figure out what the thing is. Yeah. You've got to, you know, dabble until you figure out where that energy can truly go and be, you know, manifest. Exactly. Best. Yeah. So, you know, I'm, I look at your journals and I hear you say that you are, you know, you write a lot, you're a journaler. Um, and I, I, I wonder how does that, how do your art journals, um, how do you incorporate writing into your art journals? I guess is what I'm really wanting to know. The writing my process for art journaling is um, one of the things I have to do is to get myself as kind of like I'm calling my muse, come, mm. come, come hither, come hither, come, come. <laughs> and the first, one of the first things I do is to actually journal on the blank page. Mm. And that does two things. It gets me in the mood, the creative mood, mm -hmm. but it also, it also gets the words that are in my <laughs> head down on paper. Mm -hmm. And it mm -hmm. starts the process and it takes away the blank page. Oh, I, love I that. don't have a blank page yeah. to work with anymore. Yeah, and yeah. I'm not as afraid. You know, sometimes you, you're dealing with a blank canvas. You're dealing with the blankness, the whiteness, the starkness of a page. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of like, ah, what do I do? <laughs> the first thing I do is journal. Yeah. And whatever I write, I mean, I could write my grocery list and nobody will know. But, <laughs> I mean, most of the times it is a quote or a poem or mm -hmm. actual journaling that I right. will do. Right. And, um, and then from there, I'm just, it just starts. And I'm, you know, paper and paint and whatever mm -hmm. just starts. So you, you write first and then you cover it up, basically. Basically, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I love that. So it's, a, it's just an entry point, a way to conquer the blankness of the page True. to kind of get you going, get the muse moving. Okay. Exactly. I like that. Exactly. So, you know, I hear you talking about art quilts and I see all the beautiful work in the background, which is not art journal. It's not on a, It's not in a journal. So it's another right. type of art. So talk, tell us a little bit and maybe show us some of the art that's back there. Okay. The, one of the things that how I started with mixed media is I didn't have the paper that you needed for mixed media. And I really didn't want to go out there and purchase it because right. who knows, you know, I mean, I have a whole closet full of quilting supplies that I'm not going to use anymore. <laughs> I didn't oh, want wow. to start something else. So mm. instead I started on cereal boxes. Mm. I would take the cereal boxes, cover it with gesso and start painting. Wow. Well, the cereal boxes got to be a bit kind of like, no, I need something more. And right. so I started on paper and my favorite size paper is 11 by 14. Mm -hmm. the stuff that I've done. Um, you can see this one. This is oh, love her actually pen pastel face. Ah, and um, there's journaling actually behind this whole thing as well, probably behind her face there. Ah, nice. So wow. there's that one. And I find it sometimes easy to just take a piece of paper mm -hmm. and just start. Yeah. And um, for the as you know, for the longest while, I couldn't find my journal. <laughs> yes. Uh, and so it was just paper. I had yeah. to start with the paper. And right. some of the ways, one of the things you will always find in my work is mm -hmm. circles. Yeah. Circles and me right. go together like no, but nobody's business. I just love circles, the continuity of the circle. Mm -hmm. So this really speaks to me. I love that. This really speaks to me. And that's how I started. And so some of these things on the wall behind me are mm -hmm. actual um Cereal box papers. I love it. So I love it. I kept them. I don't know if I can see that girl in the red. Uh huh. She's cereal box. She's cereal box all the way. I love it. Okay, so, so basically, use what you have. Start with whatever you already have. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I love that. Yeah. So, of course, now I have to ask you to bring the one back with the circles because you know I want you to talk a little bit about and tell folks about the Gather Five project that you're doing. Oh my God, I'm so so. <laughs> <laughs> I started, um, I started doing more in, in business, in, in trying to, to garner, um, 
just my tribe, starting to, to get my tribe together. And so I was doing more computer work and I wasn't coming to the painting table. Mm. So one of the things that I did, and I, I have a lot of supplies here. I've been doing mixed media for about four or five years. Yeah. So I have a lot of supplies and they were just languishing. And I'm looking at them thinking, I need to get back to it. Mm -hmm. But because I have so many supplies, and I know people watching will think, I have a lot of supplies too. Right. So I started this thing called Gather Five. Yes. Well, five happens to be my favorite number in mm. all the world. Five is just such a great, odd number. Yeah. Odd, weird, strange, that's me. Unique is a good, better word, but yes. that yeah. works. <laughs> so um, I thought about gathering five materials, mm -hmm. just five, and seeing what you can come up with. And one of the things that I did was this one. Yeah. So there is... Um, there's five, I couldn't tell you what they are. I should have written them on the back, but there are five <laughs> things. But I started this new thing where I will post the videos I create of my gather five moments. Awesome. So for instance, you can gather five items like acrylic paint and um, a pencil and paper and stencils. And of that five, you can use five things in it. So you're not limited to just those five things. Uh, right, right, right. You get, to put, you get to put a lot in it, but yeah. you're limited to just these five items. And so, then, if I, so if I pick five, if, I, if one of my five is acrylic, then I can use six, five different colors of acrylic. Exactly. Gotcha, okay. Exactly. Nice, yeah. nice, nice. Yeah. So I just have to tell people, there are videos out there. Um, so we'll make sure we link to, we'll give you the link to Grace's YouTube channel because she does have a couple Gather Five videos out there for you to watch. And I hear a little birdie told me that there are some more videos coming down the yeah. road. <laughs> Yes, that birdie would be me. Yes. yes. So, um, so stay there tuned. More tutorials coming down the road. It's yeah. just an editing phase. I need to get them done. So if you want to try it, the Gather 5 for yourself, mm -hmm. which I hope you do, because I'd love to see what you guys produce. Yes. I actually have a PDF tutorial oh, on yeah. my website. It's free. Just go there and download it. Mm -hmm. And it explains my, the concept behind Gather 5. Mm -hmm. And it gives a list of materials that maybe you want to choose from, just so you're not starting out the gate with, right. you know, trying to figure it out. It's <laughs> a list of materials and tools that you can use. Yeah. And just start. Just yeah. start. Okay, so we'll make sure people have the link so they can get to that um, because I've actually done two of the Gather 5 videos and they're, they're amazing. And it's, it's very, um, you know, some people will think, oh, that's so restrictive, Five, but I actually felt more free because of it because for me, and I don't know how, who else works like this, but I do have a lot of supplies and sometimes that's daunting. Sometimes that's overwhelming to have that many supplies on hand. So... It's good in one right. respect because right. you have, a, you know, you have a plethora of things to choose from. Yeah. But it, yes, you say it. Yes, it can be very daunting. But sometimes see. like, oh, I could use stickers or I could use this or I could, there's so many things I could use and I end up like getting almost like choked up. Like, I don't know which one, but if I've already picked out my five and I've said, these are the five I'm going to use, then it's just right. easier. Like, okay, well, I got some rub-ons here. I'm going to stick those on. And right. So it's just, it, to me, it was actually freeing to pick the five ahead of time and then just work with that. Let go of the trying to figure out what else to do to the page. Yeah. So it, yeah. it really helps zone in on the creativity and the creation of art. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And then supplies. Yeah. So, yeah. So um, folks, make sure you check that out. Now, when we're, we're talking about um, supplies and uh, materials and such. So of course I have to ask you what I ask everybody, because we all want to know what are your favorite supplies? Well, my favorite ultimate supply, oh my gosh, is, and you won't believe that, it's gesso. <laughs> <laughs> it's gesso. This is my magic eraser. Mm -hmm. I love gesso. I love watering it down and putting a wash over. Mm. It, as I said, it erases all those things that are kind of like, oops. I don't want <laughs> so gesso is my favorite, one of my favorite things to use. Okay. Another thing I use is, um, it's called General's XXB, mm -hmm. 9 XXB pencil. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I, I found this when I was kind of binging on Mistel videos mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. she uses this all the time. And I'm yeah. wondering, what's this XXB? It is, it is the pencil. I think I'd probably rather use this one than Stabilo. Oh, wow. I, this I love. Nice. And then the other thing I actually love is I know a lot of people have different ideas for supplies mm -hmm. for um, white work. So uh, some people use gel pens. I actually use oh, yeah. just a white out. Mm -hmm. And it, 
it it works fantastically. I love how fluid it can be when it's finished. It's finished and it doesn't dry out. Mm-hmm. I don't know if that's the makeup of the pen itself, correcting or what. But those are the things. Those three things, mm-hmm. and of course stencils. I am a stencilaholic. Oh my goodness! I I would buy a stencil and and not eat right now. <laughs> just kidding. Just kidding, mom. Just kidding. <laughs> I those things I absolutely love. And of course, anything that makes a circle, anything. Yes. Same I, here. This is Same the here. end of a tape. And mm-hmm. then I actually was using a glue stick and I used the, the, the cap of the glue stick. Yes. Anything that makes a circle yeah. is something that I will, I will incorporate. I usually incorporate into my work. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I'm definitely the same way. I think I, if I look back through my journals, there's at least one circle somewhere. Even if it's like embedded underneath the gesso down below, you can still see it peeking through. I don't know what it is about circles. Um, circles and hearts for me, they just, I, something about them. Um, Same thing put hearts yeah. in, but circles, they will, they will always be in my work. Always. Yeah. 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 So, you know, I have to um, kind of go back to, can you, can you show us that big white out pen again? I want to, um, because I want people to know that, thank you. I want people to know that it doesn't, you don't have to buy you know, the, the most expensive or, and, and it doesn't even have to be from the art store. Really art journaling is just about, you know, coming to the page with whatever you have. I mean, I, I literally think if I were sitting in an office, if I had a nine to five and I just had like a Sharpie marker and some file folders and oh. some tape, I could make an art journal page, you know what I mean? With, <laughs> with just those few things. So, absolutely. yeah. So it really is about just showing up and, and spilling, spilling it out onto spilling the page. yourself out onto the page. Yeah. Absolutely. yeah. So how do you, how do you know when you're, when a page is finished, Grace, how do you make that decision? Um, I want to say that it's just like making art quilts. I know it's done when it speaks to me and it says Mm kind of like, okay, there's, it's kind of like, it's almost like exhaling. Right. It's kind of like, you're breathing and then, okay. Yeah. Yeah, And it it is a, it is for me, it is an intuition more than anything. It's not a, Mm -hmm. okay, I'm done putting stuff on the paper. Yeah. Sometimes it can be revisited because mm-hmm. I don't know what to do in that moment. So it's not done, but right. for the session, it's, it's done. Yeah. And I revisit it and I, I might just draw circles or I might just draw, you know, put little pots of paint in there. Mm-hmm. That mm-hmm. might be it. Or sometimes I'll come to it and I will just, it'll just be completely gone. Whatever yeah. I came to in that moment will completely go. And this is what it's supposed to be. Yeah. So it really depends on the how I'm feeling in that moment and when I look at the piece. Yeah. There's no there's no one way to say that it's done. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. No, I, I actually um, thank you for saying that because I feel like I'm a very intentional but also intuitive art journaler. And those things seem to be um, opposite of each other, but they actually go really well together because I'm listening to you and it sounds like you're the same because gather five is a very intentional practice, but the finishing, knowing when something is finishing is very intuitive. And so, um, yeah, no, I'm glad that you said that because it, I'm often thinking in my mind, you know, I should just open the book and just start. And sometimes I do, but even that has intention behind it. So well, one yeah. of the things, the thing is that when you start, because, you know, you, I don't like to waste things. Yeah. So some of those pages might just have paint that's from a different session. Yeah. So those aren't done. Right, right, right. But it's, it's a beginning. It yeah. is, everything is just a beginning until it's, it's finished. That's yeah. It. So, t- so what inspires your art? Like, I know you, I know you do a lot of work with writing um, and words, but what else inspires your art? Like, you know, for instance, are there other people that you look at and are inspired by their work? How do you get inspired when you need to be inspired? When I need to be inspired, and I know I need to be inspired because Pinterest comes up and I don't get out for about half an hour. I know that there's like, ins- I need right. to be inspired right. here. Right. And so I will, one of the ways to do that is to go to Pinterest. Pinterest mm-hmm. is such a big help. I mean, there's yeah. all sorts of stuff out there mm-hmm. for anything that you might need, need to kind of kind of jumpstart the, the motion. Yeah. But the, the three people that, well, two people really, mm-hmm. that um, started me on this journey. 
Mm. Were, one of them was Mistel. Yes. I just think she is most, the most prolific yeah. media artist out there with her yeah. folk art paintings and her faces. Yes. I, uh, as I said before, I binge on Mistel. <laughs> I really do binge on her videos yeah. because yeah. I, just, I am absorbed by the work that she does in just a 20 minute video. Yeah. I can sit there in my head, my kid can be calling me and no, no. <laughs> looking so Miss Stella is definitely one of those who's in, who inspires me yeah and the other person who inspires me um inspired me from the beginning right from the beginning is Robin Marie Smith mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. I think one of the reasons I liked her work is because it it was abstract like I do I don't I'm not a realist person except for the faces I create right. I'm not a realist person so I'm not going to make a vase or make a I'm not I don't do that yeah. I like shapes and forms and lines yeah um, of course circles <laughs> oh that is one of those things she really kind of gave me permission mm. to do the work that I do yeah most yeah. of my work is is basically abstract yeah um, with a sprinkling of faces thrown in yeah um the other person I'm looking at is Gerda Lipsky. Gerda. Okay. She does, um, she does really, I think she's a proper artist. She's actually German. So the, her videos are all in German. Uh, uh -huh. I don't understand a thing she's saying. Sometimes <laughs> she will remember to actually put captions in English. Oh, okay. She just talks in German. And yeah. I'm like, go girl. <laughs> I like what she's doing. Yeah. So I like her work as well. Mm -hmm. And when I'm inspired, what I'm looking for, I'm not looking to copy them because they are their own, their own people, right. their own, right. their own selves. Right. What I'm looking for is something. Um, Gerda might take a spatula and swipe it and the green of that swipe or the shape of that swipe, it just, bing, something goes off. Yeah. yeah. And I'm shutting down the computer and I'm coming to paint. <laughs> it is awesome. as easy as that sometimes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I look for one of the things I'm very observant. I look for just things. Like she might be painting over here, whoever, and I'm mm -hmm. looking on the table, like especially Mistel. When mm -hmm. she's painting, I'm looking on the table to see what it is elsewhere she has that might be coming into that paper. Right. So almost anything inspires me. Nature inspires me. I can mm -hmm. go out and look at trees. Trees, mm -hmm. trees, 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 trees. Yeah. And it's it is something anything that then catch a spark mm. that's my inspiration awesome. really simple and sometimes it's very involved yeah no i um i really appreciate the um mentioning of the the youtube folks because um you know for those watching we have i did an interview with um, mistel a while back and you have to watch that she is just so down to earth and so amazing but when you look at her art you think superstar like you think yes. oh my gosh she's like yes. rock star status but she's so humble and so and i think that is what makes her so amazing in terms of in terms of you know when you think about the person and the art together yes. it makes her even that more um special because yes. she does you know and like you i can binge watch you know five ten in a row of hers and i don't watch my, my husband hates this about me. I don't like to watch movies twice. Um, no. I'm just like, I don't feel like watching it again. But when I start watching the movie a second time, I'm like, oh, this is, I actually really like this again, right? So I'm one of those people, I'm like a reluctant second time watcher, but with Mustel's videos, I will watch them four or five, six times. It doesn't matter how many times I've seen them each time. I see something different or I get something different from her. Um, and then just, yeah, Robin Marie Smith as well. She's someone who, when I started watching her, when I found her online, I was really impressed by the fact that everybody else seemed to be doing faces. Everybody else was drawing faces, teaching you how to draw a face, teaching you how to shade a face, teaching you how to, you know, um, the proportions of a face. And, I didn't want to do that. That's not the work that I wanted to do. And so I loved when I found Robin Marie and she, like you, she was doing these very abstract things. And so um, I have to check out Gerda. Uh, and then, you know, Pinterest, um, yes, I will pull up Pinterest and I'm like you. I, it's like a rabbit hole. You just get sucked in. You pin one thing and then, yes. then you're like, you know, 50 minutes later, <laughs> you're still pinning. So yeah. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. So Tell it what, what would you say to someone who's new to art journaling? They've never done it. They're kind of apprehensive. They're trying to figure out if this is the thing for them. What, what kind of advice would you give them? 
one of the first things, um, and this is one of the things I did when I actually taught quilting, you got to play. You got mm. to play. Mm. You got to let inhibitions go away, mm -hmm. scrape them off your shoulder, and just play. Yeah. Permission to play is so important. That's how we learn. That's how we experience. That's how we move forward. If you don't play with it, and I don't mean, you know, just five minutes, right. really give yourself time to use a medium. If like, for instance, Karen Dash Neo Colors, those crayons, mm -hmm. if you've never used them before, right. get a timer for 25 minutes and sit down and play with them. Yeah. That's all. And incorporate stuff that you've already used but play with what it is you're, you're thinking of using. Yeah. So that is, my, that is my thing. I think that you need to, new art journals need to come from a place of almost kind of nothingness so that you can bring you forward. Definitely. I and play, play, play. I, I totally believe dance if you're doing, you know. <laughs> Get in the and that is beautiful come from a place of nothing so that you can come you can emerge i love that yeah. that's beautiful yeah. yeah all right so i know that you have some amazing things um coming down the road for people but i would love if you could share both your art journals with us like let us actually see them and then also um tell us about the e-courses that you current the e-course that you currently have and maybe a sneak peek about what you're working on Sneak peeks. <laughs> um, one of the courses that I just launched, which is, I just absolutely love this, is, of course, making an art journal. So this is one of the art journals that you get to make mm. in that class. Oh, and I love it. For me, it is, you know, there's, there's a lot. This is one of, let me get there. This is one of the ones I made for one of my friends. I love that. She was pregnant at the time. Mm. And then I turned, it was my birthday cake. Nice. So I, I've, I don't go through this, um, let's see if I can find another one. I don't go through this regularly, you know, mm -hmm. I, I, not regularly, um, page by page. Right, right, right. I just open it up and start. It depends upon what I think I'm going to do and, mm -hmm. you know, the, the, the weight of the things either side of the other pages. Right. So this actually is the course that I taught. This is the, the mm -hmm. one I taught. It's called Scrape, Layer, Paint, Create. Okay. And the scrape layer is, is the cover that you're making. Mm -hmm. And I absolutely love this process. This process is so freeing because there's no thinking involved. You're just playing, of course, playing. Mm -hmm. And this course is actually available right now. Oh, um, nice. Um, what is it called? SLPC. Yes. Uh, okay. SLPC. So that's some of the stuff I'm making. What's mm -hmm. coming up is um, a course on journaling oh, nice. and this this will be a little bit more involved it'll be a facilitated course the slp is um right now it's non-facilitated mm -hmm. you just sign up and actually just do the course oh, i will be doing a facilitated one um probably thinking maybe do spree cast and just show everybody at the same time so mm -hmm. that that'll come up and then there's the six week i'm thinking six week online course that is more about manifesting yourself, um, manifesting your dreams, mm -hmm. and journaling and our journaling to bring about the manifestation. So uh, that one is that one I'm working on long term. Yeah. And then the other thing I'm working on is a collections journal because I'm moving. <laughs> I'm, moving <laughs> I'm moving in a different direction with my journals. Mm -hmm. and so I am making a limited supply of a journal. Oh, wow. So that, you know, you sign up to receive it and mm -hmm. you don't know what you're getting, but you've seen some of my grace journals. That's why right. people are calling them grace journals. Mm -hmm. Absolutely love that. Yeah. And they, <clears throat> there's a limited, as I said, there's a limited number mm -hmm. and you just sign up to receive it. I'll send out posts and whatnot information about it and that's in the works hopefully i'm trying to get it out by the summer so watch out keep a lookout for it yes but those are those are the three things that i'm working on right now 
Okay, so of course, you know, my excitement over the collection uh, is just because I love anything that is done in a limited edition, which is why I'm such a fan of field notes. Um, it's because yeah. they have these limited editions that they do and they have the ones you can purchase and you don't actually know what you're going to get. You open the box, you know, you open it and you're like, oh, three beautiful neon colors or whatever it is, right? So um, I'm really excited about your collection. We'll make sure people know how to be in contact with you so they can pay attention to when that's coming down the road. Um, I actually thought you were going to try not to say anything about that. So I'm really happy that you, that you did um, put it out there. It, it is out there. It is um, out there. I haven't, I haven't pushed it as much. That's coming down the line. Right. But there will be a sign up form for those who want to subscribe. Uh, that'll mm -hmm. be on my website. So there's ways to get to that so that you can be in on the, the, the ground floor of that one. Yes. Yeah. Be a charter member. Yes. Um, so the other thing I have to say is the, the scrape layer paint create class. I love, um, I had the privilege of taking it and made two journals in there, um, which I, you know, I made this one. And then I was like, that was so awesome. And it was super easy to do. And it's so, I love it. It's amazing. Was it a fluke? Can I do it again? So then I made a smaller version just to make sure I could actually do it. I again. like that you're showing the smaller version because I did actually make a smaller version as well just to actually prove that this is really cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, really, it doesn't matter what paper, what size paper. I mean, Grace teaches you how to make it with this amazing size. And I guess I can show my Gather 5, right? Oh, yes! This was my first Gather 5. Love that it! I did. Love that page. Following Grace on um, video. And then this was my second one. Circles! Yep, circles. See, circles um, in both. I can't not have circles, right? So yeah, circles and bow. Um, so Grace, you are doing amazing things for the world. Thank you, um, for showing up the way that you do for giving the way that you do. Um, this, the process of making this cover was so, um, I actually think that you suggested writing with a pencil. I can't remember if maybe it was a pencil. No, writing was, with a Sharpie. A Sharpie. Okay. And I think that extra coming through. I think that I wrote with a pencil because I was, nervous that it was going to be my cover and what if I couldn't so anyway I ended up writing with a pencil on the first one and then on this one I actually wrote with a sharpie but then I used these really vibrant colors so you can't you can barely see sharpie under there uh, really but, it, wonderful? but it is there so thank you so much for that um as we as we sort of wrap up I want you to um maybe just you know talk a little bit about um when, when you think about creativity uh, in general, creativity for women and all the other things that we have in our lives, you know, children, spouses, uh, partners, work, business, all the things we try to juggle, um, what I, I feel like what you do is you provide a vessel for, for people to um, empower themselves. And so I, I just want you to, before we go, talk a little bit about how what you're trying to create with the six week course is a lot about helping women empower themselves creatively and what that might look like for folks. One of the things that I am passionate about is getting women to come out of themselves to show up. Mm -hmm. One of the, um, in the beginning, in the beginning, as if there was <laughs> <laughs> just in the beginning. <laughs> um, I do remember when I was younger, not saying anything, not letting my light shine. Mm -hmm. And I wish I had started earlier to actually open up, just be, just be. Mm -hmm. And that is a passionate um, endeavor of mine to get women to open up, to come into themselves and be okay with who they are right where they are. Mm -hmm. And moving forward, definitely. Mm -hmm. But but mostly just finding out who they are and being comfortable with that, yeah. being okay with what they see in the mirror, what they put on a page, what they write, how they write, how they look. Mm -hmm. um, it is more about empowering women to see themselves as worthy, mm -hmm. empowering women to make sure they know they matter. Mm -hmm. And one of the things I think that can help women is by journaling. Mm -hmm. I, that's one of the things that's helped me over the years. I've written a lot of journals mm -hmm. and the only way to move out of 
let's say the darkness, although sometimes the darkness is where you need to be to find the light. Right. But one of the things you need to do to, to actually get out of the darkness, I believe, is to journal. Mm. And there's something about holding a pen and putting your thoughts on paper. There's that connection that I have to have. I yeah. do that. I have to do that daily. Yeah. And I believe that that's a way for women to empower themselves. Yeah. I don't want to do it for you. I think women are more than capable of doing it for themselves. Yes. And I do it through journaling. It yeah. is just a fascinating thing. I can read journals from five years ago and it's kind of like, whoa, I wrote that? It's <laughs> amazing. Yeah, because same here. It, when you are just writing because you're just writing, mm -hmm. all sorts of things come out. All yeah. sorts of wonderful, new, frightening sometimes things come out, but they need to come out so that your light can shine. So yeah. that is my job. Awesome. Okay. Well, I, as, a, as a fellow journaler, I am excited about all the work that you're doing. I'm excited about the e-courses that you have coming up. I want to encourage people, go find Grace, check out what she's doing, follow her Instagram. Her Instagrams are amazing and wonderful and usually kind of hilarious. She will write these comments that are just like, <laughs> like what is this, Grace? Like, it'll be this beautiful image and then this hilarious comment. So. That's it. Joy. You Definitely. gotta love it. Um, my, so. my, my tag is creativity, um, creativity colliding with joy. I'm, yes. You gotta make it fun. Yes, absolutely. Exactly. I didn't know that was your tagline and that is so appropriate. That is exactly <laughs> what you do. So yeah, yes. it's where creativity yes. collides with joy. Yeah. Bam. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Grace, for showing Thank up you. here today Thank and letting you. us talk with you. Um, those of you watching, please, you know, do it for yourself. Connect with joy. With, look, see, I, now I'm calling you joy. Connect <laughs> with grace so that you can collide Connect with, with your, joy. Exactly. <laughs> there right. you go. There you go. All right. Thank Mwah. you. Thank you.